Now we see what are the average and marginal revenues. We studied average revenue and marginal revenue in the earlier unit. In the earlier chapter, we studied about cost and in the earlier unit of this very chapter, we have studied about revenues. So we know what is average revenue. Average revenue is it is total revenue divided by number of units of the goods. So the total revenue that you got from selling all the products, all the units, all the goods divided by the number of those units or goods or products that you sold. So you will get average revenue from it. You will know what is the price at you at which you sold the goods on an average. This is normally how we calculate averages in our daily life as well. So now let's see the average revenue. Now I've told you that in a perfectly competitive market, the price is fixed. It doesn't change. The firm can't change the price. So the price set by the market is three. Let's assume that it's three. Now if he sells five units, the total revenue will be 15 because I know total revenue is P into Q, price into number of goods sold, price into the quantity of goods sold. So it will give me a result, give me a revenue of 15. But what would be the average revenue? Average revenue would be 3. I've earned 15 rupees from selling five units so on an average i have a revenue of rupees three from each unit sold that's pretty simple now what will be the case if i sell 10 units so if i tell sell units oh sorry if i sell 10 units and each unit costs rupees three so in total i will be earning a revenue of 30 rupees. Now when I earn 30 rupees by selling 10 units, I can calculate my average revenue to be rupees 3. Average revenue is total revenue by number of units. Total revenue here is 30, number of units is 10. So 30 by 10 gives me a result of 3. So the average revenue is rupees 3 per product. Same will be the answer in all the cases. Now let's consider the case wherein you are selling 25 units. By selling 25 units, the total revenue earned is 75. Now if the total revenue is 75, the average revenue has to be 3. Because 75 divided by 25 is 3. So in all the cases, you can see that the average revenue is 3. The reason behind this is the price. The price is fixed. You are selling all the products at the same price. So on an average, you will be earning the same amount of revenue from all the products. You are earning rupees 3 only from all the products. So the average won't change. It will remain constant. Now let's see what is marginal revenue. Marginal revenue is delta total revenue divided by delta number of units.
Now let's take the first case. You are selling five goods. You are earning a revenue of fifteen. Now, had you been selling zero units, what would your total revenue be? It would have been zero. So, by how much your revenue has changed? You can say your revenue has changed by fifteen. When you were selling zero units, you were selling zero units. So, by how much have the units sold changed? They have changed by three because now you are sorry. They have changed by five because now you are selling five units. So the marginal revenue here will be three. Same would be the answer in all the cases. Now let's take the second case. Here your total revenue is thirty. So by how much? As your revenue changed, you were earning fifteen when you were selling ten units. So your revenue has changed by fifteen rupees. By how much has your quantity sold changed? Your quantity sold has changed by five because now you are selling ten units. Earlier you were selling five units. So your quantity sold has changed by five. So fifteen by five again will give you. A marginal revenue of three. This would again be constant in all the cases. Now let's take the last example, wherein you are earning a total revenue of seventy-five by selling twenty-five units. So by how much has your revenue changed? When you were selling twenty units, your revenue was sixty. Now your revenue is seventy-five. So your revenue has changed by. Fifteen. By how much has your unit sold changed? Number of units have changed by five again because now you are selling twenty-five. Earlier you were selling twenty, so your units have changed by five. Again, your marginal revenue is three. So you can see that the marginal revenue is constant in all the cases. So there is a conclusion. That we can draw from this is that under perfect competition, P equals to. AR equals to MR, and in the last slide we've also learned that P is equal to D. Therefore, all these also become equal to D. That means a firm operating under a perfect competition. will have the same curve as its price curve its demand curve its average revenue curve and its marginal revenue curve let's try to bring this out on a graph i'll clear all this for you Now, if this is the market, and this is the firm, the individual seller. This is my y-axis for both. This is my x-axis for both. And here is the origin. So now I have 
DD as my demand curve for the market and SS as my supply curve for the market. So now where they intersect each other at this point I will have the price set for the market. This would be the price that will be set for the market and since the firm is the price taker it will have to accept whatever the price the market has set. So this will continue and this would be the price which the firm has accepted. So this would be the price curve for the firm. But we know that D equals to P under the perfect competition for the firm. We have also proved that AR and MR are equal for a firm which is operating in the perfect competition which in turn are equal to P. So we can say that So we can say that this very curve tells you that it is the price curve, it is the demand curve, it is the marginal revenue curve and it is the average revenue curve for the firm, for the seller which is operating in the perfect competition. This curve is same for all, it's equal. So if anybody asks you what would be the price curve for the firm operating under perfect competition you have to say it would be a line which is parallel to x axis. Again what would be the demand curve it would be a line which is parallel to x axis. What would be the average revenue curve it will be a curve which is parallel to x axis. What will be the curve for marginal revenue it will be a curve which is parallel to x axis and all these are same they are not different but the same now one more thing i like to add here we said this is the demand curve if a demand curve is parallel to x axis we say that the demand or the elasticity of the demand is perfectly elastic. So it is pretty important for you to note that the elasticity of demand for a firm operating under perfect competition is perfectly elastic since the demand curve is parallel to x-axis. So in this slide we have learned two things. First that the price equals to demand equals to average revenue equals to the marginal revenue for a firm operating under perfect competition. Second all these things have the same curve because all are equal and the curve that you derive is parallel to the x-axis. It is parallel to the x-axis. It is horizontal. And when the demand curve is horizontal, we can say, we can conclude that the elasticity of demand in such a case would be perfectly elastic.